Where are we? I'm going to introduce you to Dawn Rice today. Uh, Dawn is a Gallup certified Clifton strength coach and owner of the Rice Leadership Group for eight years. And today he's going to be talking about the five voices. So here's Dawn Rice for you. So as it was mentioned, my name is Don Rice. Um, I am a pastor and I'm a leadership coach. Uh, so I wanted to walk you through a little bit of history about uh, who I am and what I've done and why I'm interested in being here. I was mentioning to Doug, I came in listening to your predictive index conversation and it's just fascinating to me how all of these assessments, and I, I think I heard you actually mentioned how you would like to go to your other assessments that you've had and see how it in, interacts. And, and every assessment actually touches a different aspect of you. And it's really important that we steward ourselves well, and the way that we steward ourselves well is by understanding ourselves. If we understand ourselves, we're able to interact with ourselves and others in the best way possible. So we will find success in our life at home, in our life at work, and in our life with our friends and family. So it's really important to do what you're doing here. What I would encourage you, though, is don't allow it to be just a flash in the pan, okay? The predictive index, strengths, 60% of people who go through strengths, and this is from a billion dollar company that has done statistics, 60% of people who have done strengths and other things find it to be good information and don't let it actually permeate who they are. And so it's really important when you start learning about yourself, don't let it just be something that goes by the wayside, but keep building on it. Keep building that foundation and strengthening who you are because you living intentionally in who you are is actually going to be the thing that gives you and your company success. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So I wasn't planning on saying that, but listening to the predictive index, I was like, you guys got to hear this. This is so important because it is all going to be helpful to you. What I'm going to go through today is discovering your voice, discovering your leadership voice. It's actually how you communicate with each other. Um, and everyone around you. And we're gonna do it through going through five different voices. There's little icons down here at the bottom. They all represent different voices. Some of them are soft, some of them are loud, and we will talk through all of it, and you will find out that you have all five voices in different orders. Some you kind of tuck down, some you really use and you hug and you kind of cuddle with and you enjoy and you try to force it on other people and they're like, I don't like that. And so you have to figure out how it interacts with other people. And so communication is really one of the most important things because if you don't speak, if you don't communicate yourself, if you don't allow what you think to land on other people, then they don't receive you. They don't receive you in a way that is helpful. They may read your body language, and I got to say, have you ever experienced someone who, who is sitting there and looks grumpy, and then you talk to them, and you're like, oh, they're like the nicest person in the world, <laughs> right? So we all have misinterpretations of people, and so as you speak, as you carry yourself, you will then have success. So I've been married for 19 years. I brought a picture of my family, my beautiful wife, Christy. My five kids, only crazy people have five kids or more. So I'm a little, little crazy, okay? So just bear with me. What I love about this, these little people is this one is so super sporty and really aggressive, but super kind. He was wrestling with some of his friends. His friends slapped him across the face. He starts crying and I was like, why are you crying, bro? You were wrestling. He goes, I was being gentle. They were not. <laughs> this one is drama. In, in drama class and in life. This one is technology, loves technology, loves screens, can actually utilize my computer. He is six years old and knows more than I do about the computer. This one is book smart, uh, has read hundreds of books over and over, can have really good conversations with you. And this one's my little princess in the way that she acts like a little princess. She knows that she is cute and she knows she can get things from you. <laughs> and she does it. And not just me, but to people at the church. So 
this is my family. And the reason I walk through is because of, I want you to understand that every single person that you see in your life has different personalities and you interact accordingly. So I'm not going to put him into sports, okay? I'm not sporty. If my friends are like, hey, let's go watch a football game, I'm like, are we going to sports today? Like, like I have no interest in sportsing, okay? But, but this guy, every kind of ball he touches, he can actually control really well. He's, he's in soccer, he's been placed in, in areas that are uh, older than him. And so every single one of them have talents. And so if, if I invest in them and I grow what they are good at, they will become more successful later in their life. Translate that to you in your company with the people you work. And you're like, well, Don, I'm not, I'm not a boss. I'm not a leader. We all are. Every instance of relationship that you have, you have an opportunity to be a leader. The way you talk, the way you feel, the way you behave. You lead someone because people are looking at you. Sometimes it'll be like, well, if they're willing to do that, then it's okay for me to do it. And then you might lead them in a way that they should not go. Scripture talks about that. Being very careful with the way that you interact with people because you may give them credence to do things that they shouldn't do, that they think is okay to do, and it's not okay to do. And you don't even think about how you affect people's lives. But people are watching. You are a leader in every aspect of your life. And so we need to act like leaders. And so the predictive, predictive index, the voices, strengths, BP10, everything that I get involved in, now I'm not involved with predictive index, that's your information. I'm, I would love to learn about it. But, but everything you do will help you become that leader. So one of the things I think is important for us to understand and to grasp especially because I'm on this mission to change that percentage of 60% of people not utilizing the things that they can learn about themselves. For fun, I'm a strengths coach. I'm not talking about strengths today, except for this moment, so bear with me, okay? You guys don't know anything about strengths, I'm assuming, and I don't want you to know about strengths, okay? Except for the fact that there's 34 talents in the assessment that you take. Everyone has 34 talents. They're in a ranking order when you take that assessment. Statistically, once again, Gallup is a uh, statistic company. Statistically, if you find someone with the top five talents, so my talents are includer, responsibility, achiever, connectedness, communication. If you found someone that had those top five in that order that I just named it, it is one in 33 million people. Okay? I am one in 33 million people that have the same top five talents in the same order. That is how different I am than you. If you are like, I like people, and I'm like, I like people, yeah, samesies. <laughs> We're not. I like people in a completely different way than you like people. I like people with, with soup, and you like them with bread. I mean, like, like it, it's, it's so different. And so one in 33 people. So, in a room full of tons of people, we're gonna talk, interact, and we're gonna feel differently than the people that are here. You could be sitting in this room and when you knew that you had this day, some people are like, yes, I'm so glad to be here. And other people are like, I have to be here. <laughs> like, like there's different ways that people feel about everything. And you can't expect that everyone part of strategic insurance is going to enjoy being with everyone at strategic insurance. But what you can do is find the things you do love and lean in on that. And so with the way that we think, feel, and behave, and we have such a huge room full of people, there will be one person that thinks, feels, and behaves just like you. And if you can embrace how different you are, you can actually become the stronger version of yourself because now you're not trying to be like other people. You're trying to be like yourself, just the better version. Make sense? Let's continue this talk. So one in 33 million people. In the United States, how many people are, are in the United States? 350 million. Close to that, yes. So I looked it up in, in 2022, it was about 330 million people, okay? Including Alaska. How about Canada? 15 million? Uh, more, almost double, yeah. 
So, or it is double. So it's 37 million people. Okay, I know, like Canada, they have that many people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you add those people together, how many people, if you have one in 33 million people, how many people in the United States and Canada do you have that think, feel, and behave like you do? At least with the top five talents in the same order. 12 people. There are more people in this room than in, you, in the United States and Canada that have the same top five talents in the same order. Are you getting my point? Yeah. How different you are? Okay, there's 7,846,000,000 people in the whole world. So that puts, can you do your math for, for those that are good at math? 238 people in the whole world with the same top five in the same order. I'm talking strengths, and I'm using strengths as an example to let you understand how special you are, okay? Not for you to learn about strengths. Let's take it a little, little bit further. Remember I said that those talents are in a certain order, one through five, and really your dominant talents are one through 10, sometimes 12. So statistically, if you only go down to seven, add two more talents to that in the same order. Statistically, it's one in seven billion people. So that means that in the whole world, how many people have the same top seven as you in the same order? One. One. Are you getting my point? You are special. You've been made special. And you cannot have people tell you how to live your life through their lens because they have not experienced life in the same way that you have. They have not grown up with the same parents. They have not had the same education. They have not had the same family or the same friends or the same experiences of people dying or people um, being born or, or marriages or, or the hard things that you have to walk through. We change because of every input that is in our life. So one in the whole world, guys, you are special. You are so, so special. So today, we're going to talk about talking, right? Communication. I'm going to talk about the talking. There are a couple objectives. We're going to recognize the characteristics of each of the five voices. So unfortunately, you're going to learn another system a little bit. My goal is not for you to master it. My goal is not even for you to understand it completely. My goal is for you to look at that and be like, that resonates with me. That makes sense. Okay? Because spend time with predictive, predictive index, not productive or protective, predictive index, okay? Spend time with that and just utilize this to be something that makes you a better person as part of that, okay? Identify the foundational leadership voice that you have, just the one that you were like, this resonates so much with me, and these other ones, ugh, gross, let's throw them away. Okay, and then build confidence in using your foundational leadership voice. And we will do that, hopefully, if we have time, by you spending time to pick two ideas that will resonate with you that you can then go to lunch, think about it, talk with people, and let that be it. And if you don't talk about it, then you're one of the 60% that it doesn't matter to, and we'll just deal with that, okay? So everyone speaks, but not everyone is heard. Would this resonate with you? Have you ever said anything and people are like, what? Or you gave directions to someone and they did something completely different, right? And you're like, how could I not be clearer? As I said, communication is not communication until it actually lands on the person. So it is your responsibility to be the communicator, to take that and spend time marinating with how you talk and how people receive, and then you spend time with that. So I have a group of friends that I get together with every Tuesday, and, and we partake. Um, we enjoy a glass of wine, and we do charcuterie. And so we spend time building relationships with, with these friends. And my wife walked in with me, and we came to the counter, and they're putting together this charcuterie board. And um, he looks at us and says, hey, did you bring the jams? What would you think? 
No. <laughs> you think that I forgot the jams? Is that what you're saying? That wasn't even the question I was asking. Wow. Okay. No. <laughs> so communication. So you're, you're like the jams, the jellies, the, the, the things that go in the middle with the crackers and the meat and the cheese, right? The, 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 those things. My wife looks at him and says, we didn't bring any music. <laughs> I'm like, what? She literally was listening to the music, and then he said jams. He's a musician. Her mind went to music. And I'm standing in front of a charcuterie board saying, there's no jams. There's no jellies. And you're thinking about music? This is, this is how we function. Right? You've, have you ever had experiences like that? Maybe not to that extreme, but you say something, you're like, they totally didn't get it. Maybe it's a day or a week later. And that's the thing is, everyone speaks, but not everyone is heard. Can you imagine in a conference room when everyone's talking, but it's not landing, how frustrating that can be? So our goal is to walk through that. So with that being said, consequently, Teams function at less than 60% of their true potential. In other words, because conversations just pass each other and ideas are not landing on each other and we're not paying attention to how people are perceiving us in the way that we give information and the information that we have given, 60% are, are not hitting their potential. 82% of team members feel misunderstood and undervalued. That's a, that's a big statistic, guys. It's because they don't feel heard or they don't feel like people are, are paying attention to what they're saying or that it matters to them. When in reality, you matter to the people that you're around usually. You're just not talking the same language. Team leaders rarely, if ever, hear the truth from their people. There's a couple reasons for this. One of the reasons is because the people do not value their own voice, and so they will say something, they will, they'll just slip it in on the table, and they'll lay it there, and unless everyone picks it up and looks at it and listens to it, they don't get it, right? Or they think that the person that they're talking to is more important than them, and so then they don't give that time to that person to explain their, their process. So team leaders rarely ever hear the truth of their people. Sometimes it does fall on the team leaders that they're just so busy and moving from thing to thing that they're not actually paying attention. And then leaders undermine their influence every day without even knowing it. Once again, remember, everyone in here is a leader. So it's not just bosses, not just managers, but people, leaders, people who are having influence over other people. You are not actually having all the influence that you think because you're undermining it accidentally. So what if every voice around the table was truly heard, valued, and appreciated? Could you imagine what that would feel like? How strong your company would be? How much money you would make? What kind of promotions you would have? If you owned your voice and the way that you communicate, instead of sitting back here and saying, no one cares, no one wants to hear me, I have good ideas, but I'm being rejected, and saying, that's not the perspective that everyone has. It's just my perspective because we have a tendency to have a negative perspective on ourselves a lot of times. And I have a couple people in here that are like, well, not me, not everyone, because some of us think that we're better than we are, okay? It just <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> so what if every voice was heard? So we have to start here. Know yourself to lead yourself. I call this the infinity loop. This is actually by Giant. I think it's great. We have to know ourselves in order to lead ourselves. This is how I really started off our conversation, right? In this infinity loop, you are able to actually start at any section and move around. It moves around like this, okay? So I'm gonna start with tendencies. We all have tendencies. We all have a tendency to, some of us, um, talk on airplanes, right? And everyone else is like, why are they talking? They need to be quiet. Or we have people that sit in the corner and read a book when the whole group is like talking and they're isolating themselves. 
Or we have a tendency where someone uh, says something and it's a little abrasive and people are going at them and someone stands up and is like, that's okay, they didn't mean that, right? Like we all have these ten tendencies. We have tendencies to be very organized or disorganized or, or to be able to say everyone matters or no one matters. That's our tendencies. That's how we live. This is how people see us. This is how it is to be on the other side of us. Okay? And a lot of times we're blinded to this. And our tendencies have actions. The way that we think, feel, and behave is going to move into what we actually do. But before, this is the most important little area. It's patterns. This is intentional skills that you have. And whether you pay attention to it or not, if it's unintentional, then you will have bad actions oftentimes or unintended consequences that come from your actions, right? But if it's intentional, then you're going to actually care about how you, you talk to people and how you interact, and your actions are going to show that. And you look at people and you're like, man, they used to be really rough to be around, but I enjoy being around them. It's because they just grabbed their tendencies and they became intentional about certain things because it came to their attention. But if you don't know yourself, you can't lead yourself. And so knowing yourself is becoming vulnerable and transparent to the people that you're around and listening to them say things. And a lot of times it's out of stress, stress and anxiety that you learn most, most about yourself. Like, why are they fussing at me? Why are they always sarcastic with me? Why are they nitpicking me? Why does it seem like they don't think that I'm getting anything done? because you have a tendency of some sort that's causing an action. So you start paying attention to that and how can I have an intentional pattern or habit that will turn into an action, which then gives consequences. Sometimes they are consequences that you love and want. Sometimes they are unintentional consequences, which are good sometimes too. So it could be ill or good consequences. And then it goes into reality. You create your reality with the way that you have your tendencies and the way that you're intentional. So you have to know yourself to lead yourself. And it's called the infinity loop because we never stop. We have to always keep paying attention to how we function so that we will have success in every interaction that we have. Let me. So we're gonna go through five voices. I don't even know what time it is. Wow, I took up a lot of time with the introduction. Okay, actually it wasn't in. Oh, we did start a little later, didn't we? Okay, okay. I was like, whoa! <laughs> okay, so these are the five voices. This is the decibel, decibel level of those five voices. Okay, you have the nurturer, they are present-oriented. You have the creative, very future-oriented. The guardian, which is present-oriented. The connector, which is future-oriented. And the pioneer, future-oriented. So we have three that are future-oriented and two that are not, two that are present. Can you imagine people who are high-present-oriented and people who are high-futuristic-oriented not communicating well with each other? Okay, so we're gonna walk through each one of these and we're gonna pay a little bit of attention. So what I want you to do is I went, as I'm talking and I'm explaining each one of these, I want you to say, that's me. That makes sense, that resonates. Or I want you to say, mm, that's, that's, not, that's not me. I don't, I don't wanna be that, that, that I'll, I'll put that aside. And just be, be real with yourself, okay? I'm not asking for you to judge people around the table. I'm not asking for you to think about your, your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, you know, and, and say this is what they are. I want you to pay attention about yourself because this is about you and how you communicate. If you start going outward, you will not go inward, okay? So you need to make sure that you stay thinking about yourself. My goal is to go through this and you say that one really resonates. If you remember correctly, we all have five. 
Some are going to be a lot less in us, and some are going to be a lot more in us. I was debating whether to tell you who I, what I am or not. I'm going to, and then you can judge me as I'm going through all of the things, because I'm going to give examples of how I fail all of the time, because I think that that is the way that we learn. But I'm number one connector. Where's the decibel level? <laughs> right? That's my third. Okay? This is my second. So I'm a loud person. I like my ideas being known. I like forcing things on people. I like getting people to do things. <laughs> I like done. <laughs> Guess what everyone <laughs> thinks I am? They think I'm a nurturer because I'm kind and considerate and I like people. It's very important not to pigeonhole people in who you think they are and start interacting accordingly. You can spot things and say, I think you're this way and I'm going to test it and, and interact with you accordingly to this because I know that the nurturer, you're going to have a, a softer voice. But if you start saying you are completely, because I had, I had someone that was doing that, and they, they're like, you are totally a nurturer. You're not the others. And then they don't see me in my environment when I'm actually completely comfortable. And we have the ability to have nature, nurture, or choice, right? In all of the assessments you take, you have nature, how you were born, the way that God wired you to be, to think, feel, behave, and then nurture with all of the, the input that you have from your, your, your parents and your siblings and your friends and the, the experiences you have. And then you have choice saying, oh, I didn't like that. I want to change that or I loved that. I want to do it again. And so then we have choice. I found that I leaned so heavily in my connector this was before I had the, the understanding of this. I leaned so heavily in my connector that I had bad experiences with people around because I was so in their face, so brutally blunt. And everyone's like, you're, I, you're, you're so blunt. I'm like, I'm just being honest. And they're like, we don't like you being that honest, okay? So, so then I was like, okay, well, I need to back it off. I need to, to really just let people talk. And, and I changed how I interacted with people but it's not my natural way. And so, with me understanding how I function, it doesn't mean that I've reverted back to things. What I'm doing is in choice, I'm saying I'm gonna be more myself, but I'm going to take the things that are really good, like loving people and being kind. You know, lo loving like scripture says. You know, everything we do has to be done in love. So let's move on. The assumptions. Our voice is made up of all five. Some voices are more natural to us than others. I've covered all of this. Maturity allows us to value the contribution each voice brings. I did not cover this. As you grow, you have children, and I love, I love the way that children think because they're just so brutally themselves, <laughs> right? They haven't had all of the negativity and all the world that, that go, especially specifically between the age of three to six or seven. And then they start getting into third and fourth grade and they start paying attention to what their friends are saying and, th and, and doing. And they're like, I don't like this. I don't like being laughed at. I'm going to stop doing this. And they start changing what they're saying and how they're, they're feeling. They're still them but they're, they're changing and morphing to fit within the society that they, they are existing. And so maturity allows you to look at other people and say, I value what you bring. I don't agree with it. I don't like it, but I value it, okay? And I'm surrounded by so many guardians. My friends are guardians. And guess what my nemesis voice is? Guardian, okay? Connector doesn't understand guardian. Guardian doesn't understand connector, but they can appreciate. And my best friends, I love the information that they give me. I love the challenge that they give me. It's not how I would have challenged myself, but I take it 
and I own it, and I discard what isn't important or what isn't me, and I keep what is actually important. And that's where having all five voices in a company is so valuable because everyone is going to speak a little bit differently, and if you listen to everyone, the contribution that is brought makes you whole, okay? Nature, nurture, choice. Don't assume, and this is the, what, what I was talking about with me being nurtured, don't assume that you know what someone else's foundational voice is. Let them tell you, but what I find is not everyone is self-aware, okay? So if you are assuming they're one way, don't say, no, you're not that, you're this. Challenge them. Hey, what about this? Like when you do this and you interacted this way, is this how, this, you know, is this how you communicate it? Is this the best way? Is this how you normally do? Or was that just that one instance that you're thinking about? Challenge them. Not in like challenge them, but like push on them. See how they, how they come out. And then don't assume that you know what each word is. Just like predictive index and strengths and BP10, people like to make these words that you're like, what? That doesn't make complete sense. I mean, all of these, connector, like, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm connecting all the dots. Uh, you know, no, not necessarily. I connect some people and I, I, I enjoy the, the relationships, but that's not exactly what it means. So as we go through this, I'm going to ask you, and, and the way that Giant does it, it's a little confusing, so I'm just going to keep it very clean, okay? We're going to go with red, red, yellow, green. Green, yellow, red, okay? This is completely me. This is something that resonates with me. This is when you are talking, it's almost like you were talking to me specifically, like, like you talked to my family member and you came in, and you were like, come on, like back off, give me a little space green okay yellow is like i like it it's interesting it's something that that i i, I like to dabble in but but it's not going to be me all the time and then and then red i'd like to leave that alone let's put that on, under the table or maybe outside and and not deal with it so don't do that with the people that you don't like do that in your inside yourself okay uh we're going to be acceptant of all of you in here um if Yellow sometimes goes a little higher, sometimes goes a little lower. Um, so we're just going to pay attention to this. You ready for this now? Ready to get into the information? Let's do it. All right. So nurture. They are champions of people. They like relational harmony and values. They intuitively feel how an organization will react to a new idea. They have a... A, a pulse on how other people feel. It's like they innately can come in and read a room. And so if you, as a leader, boss, manager, whether it is here at work or at home, you say, we're gonna change this, we're gonna do this, the nurturers are gonna be like, I don't know if that's actually gonna land well with all the other people that are going to be doing business with us because you said this over here and now you're changing it over here and they're not gonna like this. And so we need to hold on and be careful okay nurture they like the relational harmony they are thinking and i'm sorry if i'm skipping ahead because i i have all these words on a paper but and if i do i'll just be like i already said that but they they're often thinking if you change something i'm the one that communicates it to everyone i'm not ready to communicate with this to everyone unless we are for sure doing this and that we have backed up everything that is supposed to be happening. Because if I put my relational equity on the line for this system and you change it over here, I'm out. I can't handle this. A lot of people are starting to look at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Doug. <laughs> well, I, I see your wife being like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I see, I, yeah. Well, I love talking about this stuff because I see people being like, mm, mm, or others people just kind of like, so I can usually start finding out who is who just by interactions or reactions. They defend values. People will always come before profit. And so if you're part of a company that says, <coughs> we are in business to do this XYZ, 
but yet you start putting money in front of whatever you started the company for, they're going to kick back. They're going to struggle. If, you've, if you're involved or, or like Simon Sinek at all, he talks about the what and the why, right? And everyone starts business with the why. Why do they do stuff? What is their mission? And it starts going up. But along with that comes the what. And so they, they start going up with the what and the why. And then when you start building the business, start becoming successful, you tend to forget what the why is. The why tends to kind of plateau, whereas the what goes up. And in that separation of the why and the what becomes the distrust, specifically for the nurturers. Because they're like, we're not even where we were to begin with. And you only care about your bottom line. You don't care about the people in the business or outside of the business. And there will be problems. The thing about nurturers, because of the relational harmony, they do not often speak up. They will be quiet. And then something goes bad and they're like, I knew it was going to go bad, and the other people were like, why didn't you tell us? Like, why didn't you caution us? And honestly, they're like, well, because you probably wouldn't hear me. Probably wouldn't pay attention to what I'm saying. Thus, do you remember them being the quietest ones? They do not think that they matter. They do not think that their thoughts matter a lot of times in the gamut of all of the others. And so they tend to be quiet because of that reason or because of the harmony they don't want to rock the boat in the business or out of the business. They're just going to be along for the ride. They function as the relational oil inside of teams and organizations. The loudest voice is pioneer. They have the ability to soften the pioneer because the pioneer will run through walls and get things done. And the nurturer is like, whoa, hey, hey, hey. what about that? And the pioneer's like, what? You know, like, like they will stop and be like, I don't, I, okay, fine. And it slows them down just for a little bit, but they, they have that oil to be able to say, let's make this smoother. Let's make this actually amiable between everyone. And so the, the nurturers will really spend time trying to make sure that everything is good. They're pragmatic realists who ask, has this really been thought through? talked about that. They have a genuine delight in celebrating the achievements of, of others. Have you ever experienced anyone? It's so funny because I've talked to a lot of my close friends. They're very strong personalities. And I had one of them say, everyone is in everything for themselves. No one ever is selfless. What they're talking is through their own lens. When in reality, nurturers are like, I want you to succeed. We're going to compete. I'm going to help you win. I'm going to be along your side. I'm going to be the second man. I'm going to be the supporter. And they care about the relationships more than they care about the profits. Not that they, they are not at all about the profits, but they want to make sure that the people are good. Because if you don't have people, you don't have a business. They're natural team players, and they can, com can become overly resistant to change and demonstrate passive aggressive tendencies. So this is going to be some good and some bad, right? And it's passive aggressive because they know, they think they know, and then they don't speak up, and then something happens, and then they point it out, and it's like, okay. Or, hey, we're going we're gonna to change this over there. Oh, are you? Good. You know, which they're not saying it's good. Right? You got to read it. <laughs> Did you say we'll see? <laughs> okay. They rarely value the contribution that they make. And that's important for nurturers to hear. You rarely value the contribution that you make because you don't think that your voice matters or your ideas matter. And it's not always because you think your ideas are bad, but because people don't seem to listen to you. And so it's become nurture for you to keep quiet. But what you actually need to understand is all of the other voices value the nurturers. They just don't always demonstrate it. And sometimes they don't like it in that moment. Specifically, pioneers don't like when nurturers talk, but they go back into their, their office and they start mulling things over and they're like, oh, that's actually probably a good idea and I probably need to do it. Okay. <laughs> But what, when they were with the nurturers, they're like, no, we're going to continue doing this, and I don't care what you're going to do. Like, 
they change their mind and then they're <laughs> no one's looking at you, Doug. <laughs> so, all right. So they're a champion of people, relational harmony, and values. They watch out for, so watch out. Nurturers have the fear of conflict and often won't speak out. So beware of silence. If people are being quiet, it's not usually because they want to be quiet. It's because they probably don't feel heard. So encourage nurturers to talk. Let them be the first to talk. If you know that you're, you have a nurturer next to you, say, hey, Johnny, what do you think about this idea? Without them knowing what you think, because then they will be able to say that. And let them know that you actually care about what they're saying. All right? How to empower them? Let them speak first. Affirm their competence and genuine value of their contribution. Okay, so, are you like, yes, that's me? Or, uh, I, it could be me. Because remember, we have, these, we have these voices all in differing orders. We're just paying attention to the really green one specifically, but like, where, would it fall in the yellow or would it be like, blah, not interested, okay? <laughs> So funny thing, nurturers make up 43% of the population. <laughs> so many people are nurturers and so many people don't feel like they have a voice. So be careful with the nurturers that are around. I'm not saying handle them with child gloves, but give them a voice because they have a voice that matters because they connect to most of the population because nurturers think like nurturers, right? 43% of the population, if you're talking to them and they're like, I think a lot of people aren't going to like this, probably a lot of people aren't going to like it. Okay? Let's move on. Creative. So that's nurture. Everyone got nurture? Understand nurture? Creative. This is my number two. Champion of future ideas, innovation, and organizational integrity. They are conceptual archi architects and love to think outside of the box. This is the person that when they bring ideas to a table, the people at the table are like, what? what? They don't quite get what that person is saying. They don't understand the concept that they're bringing. They usually come out with great ideas, but they tend to be left on the table because people don't understand those ideas. Fun fact, creatives give those ideas, and then three months later, other voices come out and say, hey, I have a great idea. And they say exactly what the creative says. And they're like, I said that three months ago. They're like, no, you didn't. I didn't hear that at all. It's because they're not communicating themselves in a way that other people understand because they think so outside of the box. Unfortunately, I had this example um, at, now this is not my primary voice. This is my secondary voice. I had this, this example at Verizon. I'm going to give you a quick example. Um, we're switching all of our phones over to Verizon from AT&T. And I'm going to give this and see, hopefully you stick with me. And I wanted all brand new phones because new lines get the best deals. And if you get a new line, you, do, you lose out on the deal if you don't switch over your phone. I wanted to keep my phone, but I wanted to get a new phone. So I want another line for that. And they're like, well, you can't actually have another phone if you switch over your phone number. I'm like, well, what if I actually switch over my phone number, but then add four more lines so we have five lines and I just use my phone? And they're like, so you're going to have a phone you don't use? I was like, absolutely. So I can have another phone because my daughter is going to turn 12 in three months and I want to have a phone for her. And so then when it's time to get her line added, which will be the the sixth line, I can then re-up my phone to be a brand new phone and now we have five brand new phones with my one old phone. <laughs> so literally, we had to bring another person in that conversation <laughs> for them to interpret what I was saying. And they're like, that actually makes complete sense. Okay. For me, I was like, yeah, this, this makes sense. Let's just do it. Let's, let's. And sometimes as the creative, I have to say, just please do the steps that I'm asking <laughs> because we will get to the result that I want even though you don't understand what I'm saying because I don't know how else to say this because I've said it 20 different ways. Okay? Creatives are a get a little frustrated. But they're quiet because, because they think so differently that a lot of people... They pick up their information, they put it down because they don't understand. 
And so the creative is like, well, why, why would I talk? They function as an early warning radar for teams, often seeing the opportunities and dangers long before everyone else does. Remember, they're future oriented. So when someone gives an idea, the creative is thinking through all the possibilities that could happen or could not happen. And so they're playing everything out and they're like, hey, if we go down this road, this is going to be a problem. And then they, are, they, they have that innate ability to do that. They're never satisfied with the status quo. They inherently believe that things can always be better. An immature, creative person will focus on the 10% that was bad and not the 90% that was good because they just want to keep making it better because they envision this future that was amazing and we're not there yet because it's not amazing. It's really good, but it's not amazing. And that's the immature, creative. And so you have to be careful because you can take that, that, that air out of the room very quickly. If, if your team is like, this was awesome, we succeeded, we hit most of the, the, the mile, mile markers, and the creative is like, guys, good job, but we have to pay attention. And everyone else is like, what? Right? If the vision is compelling, the word can't is not in the vocabulary. They just keep going. They struggle really hard and fast towards it. They often struggle with the fact that people never seem to fully understand their ideas. I talked about that. They exhibit a strong social conscience and desire for personal and organizational integrity. They hold strong to their values, but their values are the thing that creates their vision, and their vision is what they struggle giving to everyone else. Being internal perfectionists, they then fall into the celebration of the nine, what, what I talked about, where they don't celebrate the 90 uh, and they look at the 10. So creative, future ideas, innovation, organizational integrity. Watch out for, because they can struggle to communicate effectively and have idealist perfection tendencies. When it comes to a creative, if you find out that you are creative or someone else is creative, say, hey, this is my voice, this is what I'm leaning towards. If I say something and you don't understand, ask me questions. Pull it out of me. Keep following up. We will then have a perfect plan if you will team up with me to help me get my idea out. Otherwise, the creative by themselves will wither. Don't judge them on what they say first because oftentimes the first thing that they say is not the thing that they actually mean. Okay? They tend to talk before they think and they're like, oh man, what did I just do? Okay? So is this green, yellow, or red for you? Statistically, this is 9% if it's your first voice. 9%. Not a ton. Guardian, are you guys with me? You hanging with me? Okay. Champion of due diligence, resources, efficient systems and processes. So this is, remember, my nemesis voice. The voice that I do not understand, okay? I do not like when they interact with me. I like the results of what they say, but I don't like interacting with them, okay? So don't ever give this out because all my friends know that they're guardians. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a relentless commitment to ask the difficult questions. They are think, think guardian the way that we as Americans think of guardian. We stand and we, we guard certain things that are important, specifically the past so that we can have a good future. Okay. And they have a relentless commitment to ask those difficult questions. They will step into an area, even if it is difficult to make sure it is good. Okay. So if you're like, hey, I have this idea, and they're like, hey, do we have the finances for that? And do we have the people for that? And do we actually have the processes in order? And are we ready to move on that right now? Because it seems like you're about to move a little too fast, and we're not ready for that. So, and does that hit our values? And, and like, just on and on. And when guardians get into a place that they have not been, if there was not a guardian, and then a guardian steps in, everything just kind of breaks apart, and then they put it right back together because they're like, here are so many processes that we're missing. Processes in order. Everything's good. We're good to go. Not supposed to think about other people, right? Mm, yeah. Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, Apparently, 
They will always seek to honor the past as, uh, as teams look towards the future. They accept as personal the commitment to deliver projects on time and on budgets. If you give them responsibility, they take that responsibility very seriously. You can depend on them. You, get, you tell them once, they've got it, okay? For the, the pioneer and the connector, they say, let's do this, and the guardian standing and say, hey, wait, and you're like, okay, what? What do you have? And they ask, 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 and then they have a perfect thing. And you're like, okay, go do it. And it gets done on time and perfectly, okay? And we can step back and say, we're good, because they are process people. They are detailed people. Pioneers, connectors, 30,000 uh, square foot, 30,000 foot people, visionaries, don't like details, okay? Get exhausted trying to put all the details together, okay? but we find our guardian friends and be like, hey, I have this really good idea. Get them to buy into it and then hand it off, okay? Guardian. They have the ability to detach decision-making from personal sentiments. This is dangerous and wonderful, okay? So they look at decision-making and they will start asking questions, but they will detach it from the way that they feel and the way that other people feel. And so sometimes it seems aggressive. Sometimes it seems abrasive because the thing that they're working through to make sure that the process is great is what is important, and they look up and they forget that you're an actual human being. And they start just bowling through and making these things happen, and people are laying on the floor and they're just kind of stepping over them, okay? Um, they have naturally risk adverse asking, uh, is it worth the risk of investment? So we talked about that. They respect and value logic, order systems, and repeatable processes. Can you see how these people are wonderful? No. <laughs> this is going to be a red for you. <laughs> oh, these companies cannot exist without guardians. They have to have guardians. They have to have guardians, <laughs> right? That's how we feel a lot of times. I'm just kidding. I'm, whoever's guardian, I'm sorry. Um, they desire for truth and right decisions uh, can sometimes, the desire for truth and right decisions can sometimes override the feelings of others. We talked about that. My guardian friends are often at odds with most of my other friends. They are considered friends. They love each other, but they don't like to hang out very much, okay? Because a lot of times, even in personal conversation, there's, there's, there's discussions and, and little affronts. So they like due diligence, resources, um, and effective systems and processes. Watch out, because they are risk adverse. They can be negative and bring excessive critique, especially when they're unhealthy and immature. Okay? How to empower them? Welcome their challenging critique and commitment to due diligence. I tell my guardian friend, I love them so very much all of the time. I said, I, I, I'm so frustrated with you a lot, but I love you. And I welcome, I said, keep talking into me, like as much, because I will shut him down. I, I will, unfortunately, I'm a little sharp with my tongue sometimes, and I like, I'm like, that hurt, Poof, I'm gonna hurt you. And, and the guardian's like, what? You know, so. <laughs> Okay, so is this green for you? No, red. Okay, guardian is 30%. Do you remember the statistic of 82% of people at the beginning don't feel heard, don't connect well with other people? It's these three. Put them together. All right. Connector. Champion of relational networks, internal collaboration, and effective communication. Okay. Are you guys with me? Have I put you all to sleep? Okay. Good. Connector. Connector is one of my favorites because it's my number one. Okay. Um, so, unfortunately, don't judge me on this. Okay. They are persuasive and inspirational communicators. They rally people to causes and things that they believe in. Just gonna give you a personal story. I have a tendency to love certain things and I talk about them. Strengths, I love strengths. I remember I'm a pastor, been a pastor for 19 years. When I preach, I use illustrations. When I'm using illustrations, I use everyday illustrations. One day I bought a Shark Duo Clean vacuum cleaner and I was so fascinated with it because it's got a little roller in the front and not just a brush. 
And so when you vacuum with just a brush and you go to like children's chi uh, um, Cheerios and little Legos that you don't want to step on, but you want to vacuum them up, uh, they usually spit them out because the, the brush is kicking them. Whereas this roller in the front sucks them right in. It sucks little kids socks in. It just goes, it doesn't stop. And so just mowing over all my kids toys and everything is wonderful with, with, with my vacuum cleaner. And so I'm vacuuming with this thing. It's about three, $300 and I'm using it as an illustration at church. I just love this thing. And I went into more detail. I had four people call me and say, what was that vacuum cleaner? <laughs> I'm actually at the store right now and they're sending me pictures like, is this the one? Okay. When you love something, you tend to sell it, right? Connectors tend to love big. They love processes, they love people, they love things, big. But it's not everything, it's just certain things. And so I will champion connectors. Mm. Connectors will champion certain things and you will think that they are the greatest thing ever, okay? And it's good to have connectors there. They're incredibly resourceful. Whatever you need, I can get or I have a source. In other words, connectors with a guy that knows a guy, okay? Literally, my sister became homeless the day after Christmas because she was in Airbnb, couldn't find a rental. The people with the Airbnb who were missionaries came to live, and they already agreed that they would get out. So they got out. They are homeless. They, they called me in Rockford. They're like, hey, Don, can we live in your house for the next 10 days because we know, know you're on vacation? Yes, go, go. It's not spotless, but go. My wife is going to have a little conniption, but go. My wife's like, oh, I'm like, if it was your brother, what would you do? And he's, she's like, oh, I let them stay. So they stayed in my house. They stayed at someone else's house. They're still looking. I have connected with my wholesaler friends, my realtor friends. I've connected with my investors. I've connected with, like, I have done all that. And then I'm like, I've got a friend from 20 years ago that went to college who is a manager at the La Quinta Inn. I'm going to call him. They're staying at the La Quinta Inn for the next month. So, like, and I haven't talked to this guy for so long, but connectors have this ability that when they see someone, they're like best friends. Like no time has ever passed. There's no half-life to relationships with them. They're like, hey, I saw you just, just four years ago. How are you doing, dude? Do you have any more kids? Like I've got 700 now, so like. like <laughs> um, and, and so connectors have that ability. They, they have this relational uh, vortex also, like to where if they meet you and they're like, hey, I'm gonna introduce you to my, my next friend. Hey, JJ, this is Doug. I just met him. We're like so close now because we have had such great conversations. And he's like, wait, wait, we're, we're, we're close? And he's like, oh, maybe, maybe we did have a good conversation. Yeah, Don and I are actually friends. Yes, hey, hey, JJ. <laughs> you know, like connectors have that ability to make you feel wanted and needed and seen, okay? That's the connector. They have the capacity to maintain large number of relationships, usually, and it's so funny because of uh, my lead pastor, JJ knows him, my lead pastor uh, has like five friends. And he's like, I'm at capacity. I can't, I, I can't handle this. And I'm like, how are you at capacity? And I, so I'm, I'm, I'm the relational side of the house at church and I'm building these friends and I've got probably 200 to 250 of closest friends. And I'm like, I'm at capacity now. <clears throat> but but joking aside, the, the reality is connectors have a huge group of people that they consider friends. It's almost like people who you consider as acquaintances, the connector considers friends. People you consider friends, they consider best friends. People you consider best friends, they consider family. And so they care about people deeply. And, and, and they sometimes can come across also as salesmen. They hate the moniker salesman because they're like, I'm not selling you anything. I'm sharing something that I love that I know will help you. And so I'm just sharing it. And so if you, <laughs> if you label them as a salesman, they're like, they're like a little offended because they're like, no, I'm like, if I'm doing you a disservice, if I do not share this with you. All right. Um, they know how to connect with people and their aspirations because they can help that person feel heard and valued. They actually lean into that relationship. They need appreciation and credit for making those key connections. This one, I was like, 
I don't know if I agree with this one because it seems like very passive aggressive, like, hey, are you aware of what I've done for you? Until Thursday when I talked to my buddy who is part of this, um, we call it Grasshopper U, with this one businessman that owns uh, a worldwide company uh, and he's running through business. And I said to my buddy, hey, do you know how you have the job that you have? Because he is filming a nonprofit video of apologetics uh, scientist and he's traveling all over the world to do this. And this guy is funding him to do this, okay? And I'm like, do you know how you do that? <laughs> well, four years ago, your partner went into Grasshopper U by my invite, <laughs> okay? <laughs> And, I, and so when I read this, I was like, oh, man. I'm like, I do not do this, and apparently I do it. <laughs> Probably not the healthiest. It's just say, look at me, okay? Unfortunately, I was living badly in that moment, okay? Um, their their people-pleasing tendencies mean, uh, mean they often struggle to bring effective challenge. They will push and push until the person pushes back, and they're like, okay, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do, that's fine, okay? Just know that this is probably the best way. So like we have a tendency to push until the person doesn't want to push anymore because we would rather keep the relationship than make you do what you don't want to do because I may need that relationship later, <laughs> which sounds horrible, right? But all my connectors are like, hey, that makes sense, <laughs> all right? They often struggle to hear or engage fully with critical feedback. They have great ideas, great connections with people, and someone says, I don't like that, but the thing is, the connectors have put their heart and soul into things. And when you poo-poo on their idea, you're poo-pooing on their heart and soul, okay? One more thing with connectors. When they talk to you, they can be a little bit dangerous in a good way <laughs> because they will go after your heart to get to your mind, to get to your pocketbook. And then before you know it, you're giving to their nonprofit. You're giving to something that they have an interest in. And they've got you. So if you think about it as manipulative, sure. Or a great movement. Okay? <laughs> so connectors. Uh, they're champion of relational networks, internal collaboration, and effective communication. Watch for, they always interpret challenge of their ideas as personal. And I used to. That's one thing I really worked on because now I have the perspective that your input is really input from your perspective, which I will take and marinate on, but it's your perspective. And I'll see how it fits within me, okay? Instead of taking it so personal. How to empower them, give them time to share their ideas and passion, appreciation before you critique. Let them say their whole piece and then ask them if you can give feedback. Unsolicited advice is really just criticism, people. If you're like, hey, that jacket's very blue. You don't like my jacket? Come on. Okay. <laughs> internal, internal, internal. <laughs> yeah. Green, yellow, or red. Green, yellow, or red. Pay attention. Okay. This is 11% of people have it as their top, their main, okay? Let's do one more, Pioneer. Champion of strategic vision, results, and problem solving. I know I've been kind of poking at, at Pioneers, um, but I gotta say, Pioneers are usually the people who make the world go round. They're the, the business owners, mostly of large companies. They're the people who are a force to be reckoned with, and they're a force to be reckoned with for a reason. But that's why I've got a job because no one likes working for them. And so 80% of people like to quit their managers. And so I get to go in. They quit their managers because they leave the job They go to the same job with a different boss, okay? So 80% quit their managers. And a lot of times those managers tend to be pioneers because they're so strong, so loud. If you remember the decibel volume, it like was off the chart. And it's not that they're loud, it's that they're loud, they're strong. They've got opinions, and it often seems like your opinion doesn't matter, except with a mature pioneer. They start caring about how people think, they start interacting, they start communicating, and you have success. 
If you actually look at the most successful co uh, companies, you usually have a pioneer and a guardian. You usually have two members together because the one is doing the process, the other is doing the vision, and they will fight, but they move together well. Okay. They approach life with an anything is possible attitude. I've got it. Can do it. No problem. If, if it's, a, if it's a, a problem, it's just your problem because I, I'm going to figure it out because nothing is never a no for me. Okay. They're brilliant at visioning and shaping a scalable future and, and is always the highest possibility or priority. So they pay attention. And unfortunately, a lot of times pioneers, when people look at them, they say they're more interested in money than people, which isn't always true, but that's what they come across as. Their strategic military thinking makes them incredibly effective at aligning people, systems, and resources. They can look at people and say, you're good at this. You can do this. I'm going to put you in position here. And then they use them. Okay? Pioneers, don't just use people. Build that relationship. But put them in the position that they're supposed to be in. Everyone exists best when they're in the position that they are good at, right? So pioneers, do it. Just do it a little bit more gently. Okay? Winning is a massive driver. They hate to give up and will drive their team long after others would have given up. They almost become taskmasters because their vision has not been fulfilled. They are future oriented. They're the people that will just keep going and they will burn the candle at both ends. They are the people, let's go back to Connector. Connector has a hard time divorcing work from life. Everything is together. You know, I'm, if I like this, I like it at work, I like it at home, I like it with my friends. I'm going to talk about it no matter where I am. It doesn't stop when I leave the doors of the job. It, it continues everywhere. Whereas Pioneer, literally they can be with you, they can be looking at you, and no one's home, right? They're like not paying attention to you because they're now thinking of the problem that they had the, or the, the, the vision that they were thinking of, and they're like, mm, mm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Pioneer is my third Okay, remember that? I used to say, hate me for this, I used to say this to my wife um, when she was talking to me. I'd be, literally, I'd be so engaged and I'd be nodding and I'd be like, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> got it. And then after the whole conversation, I'm like, uh, so I wasn't paying attention, can you say it again? And she's like, why didn't you, st I'm like, I thought I was paying attention, I totally was not paying attention. Okay, so luckily Pioneer is not my number one, <laughs> but it does affect me. It has, I do have a little issue with it. Um, they are powerful communicators using logic and rationality to provide an attractive and compelling vision for the future. My computer's about to die. I know, right? Excuse me as I get this. Because it's so important, guys. Now you guys get to eat while I talk. Okay. The immature pioneer can often appear very arrogant with a me-focused agenda. The people who are new in business that are a pioneer are all about themselves. When they start becoming mature and realizing that they need people around them, they start figuring out how to interact with other people around them. And they start maturing and start growing and start communicating. Okay? They quickly dismiss the contributions of those they don't believe to be competent or experienced. This is a big thing, guys. Because they measure people up against themselves. And no one is ever as good as you. You're always able to do, like, if you want to get, get, get anything done right, who do you get to do it? Yourself, right? That's chimed by the pioneer very often because they're the best one to do it, and they're willing to do it, and they burn themselves out, and they, they kill that, 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 that candle because they're burning it at both ends, right? So pioneer, they love the strategic vision, the results focused and problem solving, Watch out because they lack sensitivity, can be unwilling to listen, and perceived at, as arrogant. Remember, when I say watch out, this means in their unhealthy, stressful state. 
Okay, it doesn't mean that, oh, you're a, you're a pioneer, you're not going to like people. You know, that, that's not how it works. Okay, it's if they're not matured, if they're just, just going to be who they are. And then how to empower the team? Don't worry, they empower themselves. Just affirm their competence. In other words, let them know that they are good at what they're doing. Let them know that they're not good at what they're not good at, but then push them to be good at what they are doing. So, are you a green, yellow, or red? Are you green, yellow, or red? Everyone's like, I don't want to be a pioneer. <laughs> right? Some of them are saying that. <laughs> yeah. Others are like, yeah, usually the pioneers will totally own it. They're like, yeah, I'm, I'm difficult to work with, but I get things done. Right? And it's okay. Just do it better. All right. So they are 7%, thankfully. <laughs> all right. I'm almost done, guys. So putting it all together, your voice, voice order. Um, so this next section, who, let me ask, did, did you guys resonate with any of the voices? Yeah. Okay. What if you have two that are green? Then, then it, it, own them, okay? If you're like, hey, I, I can't differentiate which one is the top, then okay, great, fine. I would say my three are very close to the top with Pioneer being lower. It is, it is the one that I pull up when I really need it, and I'm willing to, but I don't need it that often, okay? Because my connector usually helps before my Pioneer needs to get there. Um, so, with whatever you are, with whatever you are, I'm gonna go through slides. I want you to kind of think through your order, if you can do that, if you can remember it, okay? And if not, put just the number one, okay? So in other words, these are the five voices. Remember, I said I'm connector, creative, pioneer, and then I'm nurturer and guardian, okay? So the five voices, leadership insights, this is where my 60% of trying to destroy that number comes in because I don't want you to just walk away with, well, that was great information and entertaining. Hopefully it was entertaining. Um, I want to walk through the five voices and I want to give you insights. There's going to be uh, a slide full of insights. I want you to grab two insights from your top voice, okay? Don't worry about all your voices in order. Just your top voice. So JJ, if you have two voices, grab two insights from the two voices, okay? But from your top voice, grab the insights. I'm going to spend, and normally, normally, I have a nurturer come up and read these, okay? Because I like to hear how they interpret them, but because you guys are eating, I will go ahead and read them. So as a nurturer, I want you to pick two things that you say, I want to walk away and utilize this in my rest of the day, okay? When you speak, number one, you represent 43% of people. Your views and options truly, or, or opinions truly matter. People see you as a highly skilled professional. It's time you started to believe that. Number three, people choose you to lead because they believe in you. Act knowing that you belong. Number four, learn to challenge the views of other voices in your team when you believe that they are wrong. That's going to be really hard for you, but do it in your nurturer way. I care about you, I love you, and I care enough about you to let you know what you need to know. Okay? Number five, embrace change and help lead it. Don't be passive and function as a victim. Too many times, nurturers and guardians and creatives act like victims, the victim mentality, okay? Don't be a victim. You have the ability to take control of your life. Don't be a victim. Number six, people trust your judgment and genuinely want to hear your opinion. Use that as your springboard for influence. You can speak the truth kindly. Key, kindly. Number seven, when people challenge your views and opinions, they are trying to help. It's not a personal attack. When people question you, and connectors have to understand this, when people question you, it is not personal. They are literally sometimes trying to understand the, the concept themselves 
or they're trying to work through the process so that they can make it manageable for themselves. Number eight, pioneers are not as insensitive or arrogant as you think, okay? They just see the world differently than you do, okay? So pick two, guys, if you're a nurturer. Creative, okay? Learn to celebrate the wins even if the result wasn't quite as perfect as you hoped. Number two, remember, just pick two. When members of your team critique your vision and ask for the details, they are genuinely trying to help. Remember, this is perception changing, guys. If you change your perception, you change your life. Okay? Number three, don't play it safe. Give yourself permission to think outside the box. Let you be you. Let it all hang out, guys. <laughs> Literally. L just enjoy being you with the, the quirkiness that you are. Four, it's okay to be wrong sometimes. It comes with the territory of being creative and imaginative. Number five, what you see as an imminent opportunity or threat may actually be further away than you think. It's like that rear view mirror. Number six, financial realities are important. Good enough may not be good enough sometimes. Number six, people are not deliberately ignoring your ideas. It's hardly truly to hear a creative. So once again, change perspective. Change the way you say whatever you're saying. Number eight, you don't have to prove your worth to teammates. Relax and trust the unique contributions that you bring. I used to get so offended. Literally, remember that example of the three months later, someone comes up with a brand new idea? I used to get so offended until I understood that I'm making a change. It just takes time. So I'm willing to speak and let it marinate and then come out. And I don't need the credit. And when I understood that, I was willing to speak more. Guardian, how you communicate is important. Volume and sensitivity. It's, it, it's possible for you to be right and wrong at the same time. Two, learn to value the future-oriented voices. They drive innovation and progress. Remember, guardian is present and past. So value the opposite of you. Number three, sometimes goalposts move on projects and it's not anyone's fault. Sometimes things just change. Allow change to happen. Don't dig your feet in and be, be stubborn, okay? Number four, learning to compromise is a healthy part of a team. Number five, be careful. Constantly driving yourself and your team will eventually lead to burnout and resentment. Uh, constantly driving yourself and your team will eventually lead to to uh, burn out. Okay? Um, number six, take time to invest in your key relationships today. You are not defined by your task achievement alone. You do not want to wake up one day and realize that you only have a legacy of the things you did and not the people you've, you've had friends with, made friends with, or your family. So make people important, not just processes. Number seven, your team knows you are competent but do they know that you care? Number eight, networking events and social media platforms are not a waste of time. <laughs> okay, connector. When people reject your idea, it is not as personal as it sometimes feels. Remember, just pick two as a connector. Hinting at your frustration with teammates does not guarantee anyone is truly hearing you. If it's really important to you, be direct. Don't go around the bush, okay? Be direct, be kind. Number three, people will critique your ideas. Try to avoid becoming overly defensive too soon, okay? Let it happen, and if you change the perspective that their opinion is really just their opinion, it changes how you feel about it. Number four, it's okay to be you. When you believe something is passionately, uh, when you believe something passionately, never be afraid to share it. Number five, when you speak, complete your sentences and stay focused on one idea at a time. Who here is a connector that does not finish your sentences? So I will be like, so I went, I went to strategic, strategic insurance and we need to do lunch. <laughs> Like, yes, I have a tendency to do that. 
I've learned, my wife is like, are you still thinking? Did you just buffer? Like, what's going on? <laughs> um, number seven, be intentional. Take time to think through how you can create a culture where other voices can bring their best. Because remember, connector is one of the loudest voices. Number eight, oh, I, I missed number six. Be, and I know that the guardians are like, hey, you missed it. Number six, be consistent in your external communication. Avoid the temptation to sell to individuals ahead of the meeting. Number seven, be intentional. Take time to think through how you can create a culture where other voices can bring their best. Read that, excuse me, sorry. And then eight, be patient with those whose due diligence process is rigorous, painful, and time consuming. Who are we talking about there? <laughs> Guardians. Pioneer. Our favorite, right? Favorite. Own it. Number one, beware of the intellectual superiority complex thinking that you are smarter than everyone else. You are the smartest in the room. You don't have all of the best ideas. Sometimes you are actually wrong, okay? Number two, take time to truly hear the views and opinions of others on your team. Key, take time, okay? Three, beware of the power of your voice. In a moment of frustration, you can do a lot of damage to others. Remember that wounds last a long time, if not a lifetime, okay? So if you speak angrily and wrongly, the next time you go to that area of pain, the person is going to wince, and you're not gonna understand why they're wincing, but they can tell you. Four, only 7% of people view the world through your eyes, 7%. Remember, winning is not the driving motivation for most people. Five, your team knows you are competent, but they are not convinced you know anything about them or their life outside of work. Key, what I have found in my consulting is that if you care about people, they care about what you are saying. If you do not care about people, they discard almost everything you say, okay? So if you do not show that you care, it's gonna be a problem. Number six, find a nurturer and ask them to mentor you to see how they see the world. <laughs> okay. So I'm a connector, remember, and I'm married to a nurturer. So I will say I have been happily married for 19 years. My wife probably 10. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which 10? Yeah, the last 10. Okay, seven, take time each day to encourage someone who doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Who you, don't, who you think doesn't deserve it, okay? Number eight, if you are wrong, fight your initial instinct to justify your decision and defect, deflect blame. You will earn respect and influence if you own up to your mistakes. The main thing I've heard from pioneers is I'm always right even when I'm wrong. Okay? Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Let's, I'm going to go through this. We're not completely done. I've got a couple more things. I'm just teasing you with the thank you slide. Okay? <sighs> Lastly, how to help you be better when using your voices. Always be for the other person. You, your interest in the other person that is opposite of you will change how you talk about them or change how you talk to them. They will care about what you say. I was a youth pastor for a decade and I had instances with many teens that was very difficult. Teens that were sleeping with people, teens that were stealing, teens that were whatever. And I would have to interact with them and tell them that they were wrong. And at no point did they run away from me. And I asked multiple of them why, and they said, because we know that you care about us, and the only reason that you're talking to us is because you care about us. And so with your voices, if you truly care about the other person, you don't have to like their voice, but if you care about them, you will value their voice, even though it's, it's difficult, okay? Talk to what you want, not what you don't want. Just like a child, you know, don't run and then they start to skip. Don't skip, and they start to like walk fast. You, you say walk. So with the voices, you tell them what you need. Don't say, 
hey, don't talk to me like that, or don't be so forceful, or don't say, I need you to be careful when you say something like this in this instance, or I need you to be careful not to shut me down in front of everyone instead of the opposite, okay? Lastly here, seek kindness, serving, and love. Kindness in your words, service in your actions, and love in your heart. If you do this, biblically, the Bible says truth without love is just noise. And so when you are speaking to each other about the different ways that you communicate, I don't care if you use these words or not, okay? But hopefully it raises ways that you think you think and think other people think. When you talk about it, speak in love, because otherwise it'll come across aggressive and they will shut down and it's not helpful, okay? Last illustration, and I like this one, so hopefully it'll land on you and I like to tell stories, and you're still eating, so I've got you captive. So, <laughs> who here knows Superman? Okay, who likes Superman? Are you more of a Batman person? There you go. Okay, okay, <laughs> sorry. So I'm gonna to talk to Superman, you can go out. Um, um, <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Um, so Superman, if you know the story, um, the, the Kents were driving down the road because they saw a spaceship come crashing down and then they end up seeing the spaceship in the side on the field, and they end up getting a flat tire serendipitously on the side of the road. Um, and so he's out there switching the tire. They meet this little kid who is like stark naked in the field, and they're like, oh, we gotta take you because we don't know uh, who, who you are and where you're from. We see the spaceship, this doesn't make sense. So they start taking him uh, home. They got him covered in, in one of, uh, I think, Jonathan's shirts. And so Jonathan is out there fixing the tire. And he, Superman, when a baby, next thing he does, he lifts the car, right? And he's switching this tire as Superman is lifting the, the tire. And then it goes on with this little montage of Jonathan teaching Superman how to, Clark Kent, how to utilize his powers because he has strength but he's misusing it. You see t uh, tractors go flying and barns getting crashed and he's, he's running into things and things are just getting demolished and he's got all of this strength, but it's not controlled. But Jonathan comes in and he's teaching him, even though he does not have the same power as Superman, he's teaching him how to utilize his strength to make it powerful. And so what you're doing with your predictive index and your voices is you are learning your strength, but hopefully you will have that guide, whether it's Doug or whoever, come in and help you turn that into power so that you can be a powerful individual in every interaction that you have, okay? Thank you for letting me come and talk. Sorry it's longer than an hour. I appreciate you. <laughs>